Hello, Spartans. Uh, so if you don't have me for biology class, my name is Mr. Zaranti, and I'm one of the teachers here at Marion. Uh, today, I'm going to walk us through the important parts of a compound light microscope. So to begin with, this plastic cover goes over the microscope. That protects all of the lenses and the stage um, from any dust that could accumulate on it, um, which would block the image that we're trying to trying to see, okay? When you remove the cover, now your microscope is ready to use. You can just put that cover on the side uh, until you're done using it, okay? Now, um, I'll try to point out these features as best I can. So we'll start up here with the eyepiece, okay? The eyepiece is where you would look through to see the specimen. Many of our microscopes, when you look through the eyepiece, also have a black pointer um, that allows you to focus on a particular part of the specimen that you're looking at. So that can be really useful when you're trying to focus an image on the stage, okay? Moving down from there, you've got our objective lenses. And you'll notice there are three of them, okay? The smallest lens is red. It has a red line all around it, okay? It can magnify an object about four times. So it'll appear four times larger than it actually is, okay? We call this our scanning lens. When you first put a specimen on the stage, that is the lens that you want to use. So if I turn the microscope this way, you'll see the smallest objective lens is pointing down, okay? While that lens is in place, you can move your slide around, your specimen around to get the image under the lens, okay? Then of course, you'll focus it, which we'll talk about in a moment. And when the picture's very clear, then you could rotate the nose piece to the low power objective lens, which is a yellow circle all the way around, okay? Now, once you've done that, and this is low power, okay? Low power, that magnification is 10 times larger. Um, then the, or the appearance is 10 times larger than the object is in real life, okay? Now, last is high power. High power you do need to be very careful with. You'll notice that once I've turned that objective lens to high power, it's very close to the glass lens underneath here, okay? If you're not careful, this objective lens can actually smash through the, the slide and break the glass. So you do want to be careful about that. That brings us to our controls, okay, which are our coarse and fine adjustment knobs, okay? This top knob is the coarse adjustment knob. When you are on high power like this, you don't touch this knob, okay? This knob moves the stage a great deal. So you can only use this course adjustment knob with scanning or low power, okay? So I'll show you how much this moves the stage. So this course adjustment knob really makes big changes in the height of the stage, okay? And that's important for magnification that we'll talk about in a second. This smaller knob is called the fine adjustment knob, and you'll notice you don't see the stage moving hardly at all for that, okay? So when you're on high power, if the object is not clear, you would start or you would only use this fine adjustment knob to try to focus that image, okay? Moving down from the lenses, okay? This entire, this platform is called the stage and these clips on the stage, you can lift them up and put them over the specimen. That just holds the specimen in place so you don't lose it, okay? Beneath the stage, you have a knob that turns. This is called the diaphragm. Its job is to control how much light is hitting the specimen, okay? And that can impact your ability to focus the image, okay? Below this, we have the light source, which is controlled with a power switch. because turns on and off. Now, different microscopes may have different switches, so you just have to look out for that depending on what microscope you're using. Now, the bottom part of the microscope on both sides is called the base, and then this support structure um, where the eyepiece and the nose piece are connected is called the arm. Extremely important when you're carrying a microscope, you always support it underneath of the base like that, 
and then hold it by the arm. You never apply pressure to the stage or the objective lenses or the eyepiece. Some of those parts can detach um, or they can become loose if, um, and wiggly and then they don't work as well if you're applying pressure to them, okay? Now, um, if you were going to, just a few pointers, if you put a specimen onto the stage, you wanna start on the scanning power, which is the red knob. Okay, you can see that there. Now, on the red knob, okay, you're moving the slide around until the image is in your field of vision. And then you're using the course adjustment knob to make that image come into focus, okay? Once it's pretty, pretty well in focus, then you can use the fine adjustment knob a little bit if you need to, to, to sharpen that image, okay? And then you're ready to go to low power, which is yellow, okay? On low power, you can still use the course adjustment knob. You might want to check and just make sure, but you can still use it. Focus the object again, or focus on the specimen again, and then turn to high power. At that point, you are restricted from using this knob, okay? It will break through the slide, so you're only using fine adjustment, okay? When you are done with your microscope, you need to prepare it for the next person. So in order to do that, you turn the knob back to scanning power. You lower the stage all the way down, okay? The next person's gonna wanna put a specimen on there. So you just get that ready for them, okay? And then of course, your last step is to put the plastic cover over the microscope, even if it's just between class periods, to make sure that no dust is getting onto those lenses. Hope this was clear. And if you have any questions, you can ask me or your biology teacher. Take care.